tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2018 Evil Idol voice acting competition in which you, the listener, get to help decide who wins. I'm Jonathan West, winner of the 2017 Evil Idol competition, and I'll be your host as all of us help decide who will be crowned the next monarch of the macabre. Voting is easy. If you'd like to see tonight's featured contestant move on, simply log into your YouTube account and click the thumbs up icon, or give them a thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will last for one week only, so don't delay. Want to spread the word about Evil Idol and tonight's contestant? Share this video on social media and include the hashtag EvilIdol2018. For myself and the creative team behind Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, good luck to all of our contestants. And thank you, listener, for helping us to coronate this year's Tyrant of Terror. Please welcome to this year's competition contestant number eight, Justine Anastasia, performing a tale by author K.J. McDonald. Submitted for your approval, we present to you How I Got My Girl. My husband, Robbie, died in a freak accident. At least, that's what a lot of people called it. I'm not sure I know what that means anymore. Freak accident. It's a phrase used to describe things that only happen to other people. This happened to me. Robbie was changing a light bulb in the bathroom. He fell off the ladder and hit his head just right on the corner of the sink. He died on the floor in front of the mirror. I found him there, lying in a halo of congealing blood. A year later, I stood where he died and stared at the drawing on the mirror. Robbie drew it when he was alive. He often drew things there after the shower filled the glass with steam. A heart one day, my name another. You know, sweet little things. It was our tacit ritual. The last thing he drew was a house. Two vertical lines with a triangle on top. There were three people inside. A woman, a man, and a child. The child was a girl. My girl. I could tell by the dress and the long hair. We'd been trying for a baby. He knew I wanted a girl. I hadn't washed the mirror since his death. The surface was matte with dust, except for the lines I traced. I often stood there, bottle dangling in one hand, and ran my finger along the lines he drew. Sometimes tears welled in my eyes. Other times, there was just the sour tang of cheap whiskey in the back of my throat. I found a sick kind of solace in my ritual. It was the last connection between myself and a life that I could no longer hope for. It was my shrine to grief and loss. I was tracing the lines when I heard her tapping at the door. Quiet at first, then louder, more insistent. I heard the key in the lock and the creaking hinges. I sighed and doubled my concentration on tracing Robbie's lines. Teresa, she called, my mother. I closed my eyes and clenched my fists as I listened to her confident footfalls echo in the hallway. Jesus, what a mess, she cried. I tried to tune her out. Maybe if I was quiet, she would go away. I heard the clinking of bottles as she threw them in the trash, cleaning as she walked. Teresa, she called again, louder. I had been tracing the curve of the little girl's cheek in the mirror. As my bedroom door creaked open, my finger pressed white against the glass. Teresa, mother sighed as she entered, interrupting my precious right. Oh, man, she said. That's just weird. I'd like to be alone, mother, 
I said. No, baby. You've had enough alone time. Get dressed. We'll get lunch. We stared each other down. My shoulders slumped. Hers squared. I didn't want to go. But I figured that if I did, she'd likely fuck off for a while. So I shuffled out of the room to get my things. As I pulled on a sock, I heard a squeaking noise from the bathroom. I realized what it was with mounting horror. I caught her red-handed, with a bottle of Windex and a dusty rag. The mirror shined behind her. I screamed. I could have killed her. But I only shoved her. I cried. She cried. We didn't get lunch, after all. I sobbed into a pillow for a while. I had a drink. I got a headache. I decided to take a shower. The clean mirror filled with condensation. A blank canvas. I was doubled over, toweling my hair, when I heard the familiar sound. A finger tracing lines in the condensation. Slowly, I raised my head and watched in disbelief as the letters appeared. I'm still here, they said. Robbie? I whispered, barely daring to believe. Is that you? My heart raced as invisible fingers began to scrawl a reply. Never was, it wrote. I don't know how long I stood there in the quiet, processing what I was seeing. It felt like quite a while. Slow anger boiled its way through me like fever. I trembled with rage. Not fear, incredulity, or curiosity, but pure, unadulterated rage. I felt like a fool. A scream started low in my throat as I reached for the hairdryer sitting on the counter. I hurled it at the mirror. A deafening sound like laughter filled the room as the glass splintered. The next few hours are hazy, at best. I crawled into a bottle, and eventually into bed. It was dark when I woke up, with a sticky mouth and a dizzy, aching head. I'd left the bathroom light on, and a shaft of light fell across the foot of my bed. She was sitting there, with her back to me. Her blonde hair was wet, and she was wearing pajamas with little clouds printed on them. Who are you? I asked. She didn't answer, but I could hear her breathing. She wasn't like a ghost. She was solid. Her weight made a dent in the mattress. At the same time, there was something about her that wasn't quite there. It was like looking at a doll or a statue. A representation. She seemed to huddle in a space smaller than herself. She seemed very afraid. Perhaps that's why I wasn't. Did you come from the mirror? I asked. When she answered, it was as a voice in my head. Yes, she said. I'm sorry that I made you mad. Her voice was low and sad. That's okay, I said. I wasn't angry at you, just... the circumstances. I understand, she said. Sometimes I feel that way, too. Do you? I said. What do you feel that way about? She laughed, like a bell ringing inside my skull. About being me, I guess, she said. <laughs> What's that like? I asked, being you. Lonely, she said. You don't have to be lonely anymore, I said, barely registering the words coming out of my mouth. You have me now. She turned then, 
and I saw what she must have meant. She was obviously dead. Her eyes were dark sockets, her skin bloated and pale. What happened to you? I asked. Mom, she put me in the bathtub, the little girl whispered. She even filled it with bubbles. But then she held me under the water. She began to cry. I opened my arms and she sank into them. Shh, it's okay, I said. I've got you. I've got you. Little did I know that it was the other way around. The girl had me. I loved her. I loved that dead and hurting little girl because she was so much like the dead and hurting part of me. It was selfish, really. At first, all she wanted was my company. But as the days and weeks and months went by, she began to change. Her eyes brightened, her skin dried out and firmed up. She wanted dresses, sweets and toys. She wanted more and more of my time. She got jealous if I had to work late. She'd keep me up all night after a long shift, grilling me about my love for her. A year went by. I brought home a date, and she scared him away. He couldn't see her, of course, but he could hear her. She scared off every man I tried to bring home, except for the amateur paranormal investigator. I had to get a restraining order against him. He still calls and leaves warnings on my voicemail. Demon, he says. Disguise, he says. But that's a story for another time. Now, she's growing every day. I wonder how big she'll get. Thanks for listening. I'm Jonathan West, reminding you, if you haven't already, to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Voting is easy. Simply log into your YouTube account and click the thumbs up icon if you'd like to see the contestant move on. Or give them a thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Want to spread the word about Evil Idol and tonight's contestant? Don't forget to spread the word by sharing tonight's entry on social media and include the hashtag EvilIdol2018. You've been listening to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights in the 2018 Evil Idol voice acting competition. I'm your host, 2017 winner Jonathan West, inviting you to return every weekday for a new entry from our amazing contestants. Until then, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights 